antibodies are human immunoglobulins that are part of the immune system that allow us to defend against foreign objects. In most instances, they're used in a process to protect against foreign materials, but also there is a constant screening of self versus non-self to essentially control aberrant processes in humans like cancer. That great specificity of these molecules, which is based in the ability of the body to produce a profound number of molecules, allows one to use that power of discrimination for research purposes, for diagnostic purposes, and for therapeutic purposes. The problem has always been in the past how to produce them in large amounts with a high degree of specificity, both for interrogation and study, and also for therapeutics. About 30 years ago, two British scientists, Cole and Milstein, who got Nobel Prize for this, find a way to generate monoclonal antibody by means of hybridoma technology. Basically, they utilize a type of cancer cell called myeloma. When they fuse the B cells with myeloma, obtain the resulting cell called hybridoma. That technology was used by mouse cells. Mouse is good animal to make antibody, but not the best. The rabbit is the best. Hard to make monoclonal antibodies against mouse uh, targets using a mouse or even rat systems. The rabbits have a much more complicated immune system, so it's possible to get better quality antibodies in a, in a rabbit than in a mouse. Ten years ago when I was working in the USSF, we made the new rabbit tumor cell. Then we have rabbit monoclonal technology. Rabbit's antibodies are more specific than the mouse antibodies, so they don't cross-react. They are good also because I use them in fax, I use them in Western blood, so they work with different techniques. The rabbit monoclonal antibodies are really excellent IHC reagents, which makes it very simple to create a very high-quality assay that pathologists can perform worldwide in their own independent laboratories. A rabbit monoclonal antibody have very high affinity and specificity. That's why they work very well in immunohistochemistry, in the staining of tissues, samples, and, and cell lines. High affinity means they can bond to the target very tightly. If you want to uh, atta attack the tumor cell, you want to attack very strongly so that you can kill the tumor cell. If you're not that strong, the tumor cell will come back. And with rapid monoclonal, we can use the industry scale to make antibodies. Before Aptomics, no one able to make the antibody in such uh, factory style. I think the technology is really strong, and, uh, and I think that uh, people ought to be aware of this because um, there are lots of uh, problems in immunology that can be solved using this rabbit uh, monoclonal technology approach. We are one of the earliest investors dating back to the day when the company was founded. And the reason why we invested in the company is because the company has a very proprietary technology. We know there was a chance to grow the company. Early on, a colleague of mine and I set up a company to produce antibodies, in this case with mice, on a genomic scale. As this company got started, we met Guoliang. When I learned that Epitomics was focused similarly on developing a very efficient system for production of the antibodies in China at a relatively low cost, then it seemed like a much preferred way to produce antibodies because of the relatively large amount of antibodies produced in a rabbit as compared to a mouse. Those two features higher quality, larger amounts, still at a relatively low cost. I became totally convinced that the rabbit monoclonal approach could very well change the business proposition in an already quite dynamic industry. We adopted a progressive business model where we started with uh, developing reagent antibody for the marketplace. Then we move on to diagnostic product then of course the therapeutic would be long term and require a significant amount of capital. So the research reagent product as well as the diagnostic product eventually would also fuel the growth of the company 
and allow us to grow into the therapeutic area as well. The first product that we put on the market was in January of 05. We put five antibodies onto the website and within that week somebody had ordered an antibody from us and that was a hallmark for the company. In the last three to four years we have produced over a thousand rapid monoclonal antibodies helping various researchers to study different uh, molecular mechanism of uh, diseases as well as many dozens of diagnostic products helping the doctors, the physicians to decide which stage of diseases the patients are and therefore design a better therapy for them. The synergistic effect of the three activities, research, diagnostic and therapeutic activity, has worked really well as a team. We've averaged about 130% growth year over year. The thing that's really rewarding though is when customers come back to you and say, you know, you have the best antibody for this protein or, or molecule, or, you know, nobody else has been able to develop this antibody, this is great. My company, AGI, was working on a test for early stage breast cancer to determine which early stage breast cancer patients uh, should have more aggressive treatment. We turned to Epitomics to help us make monoclonal antibodies and that project went uh, really very well and produced some spectacular quality rabbit monoclonal antibodies that we've now turned into a clinical product that is being marketed by our company. Epitomics uh, worked with us or we worked with them to produce a very interesting and important monoclonal antibody directed against a molecule called CD101 and worked out extremely well. We have a paper that is uh, just now coming out in the Journal of Immunology uh, describing this work with the antibody. We formed a much more collaborative relationship. So the broader goal now is to develop a broad-based classification of carcinoma. All the different cancer types that originate in epithelial tissue, breast cancer, lung cancer, bladder cancer, ovarian cancer, head and neck cancer. There are two major technology platforms that we can apply to the development of therapeutic monoclonal antibodies. One is the RAPMAP technology. The second is a new humanization technology, MLG. Combining these two powerful technologies will allow us to design better drug, design drug faster. We are doing such a development by partnership with large pharmaceutical companies, large biotech company in Europe, in North America, as well as in Asia. For the reagent market, uh, I think over time, I think we can capture at least more than $100 million. I think the diagnostic market, I think you can capture between the $100 to $500 million markets. And then for the therapeutic, is a, well, these opportunities are unbounded. Is a limitless. The synergy between our U.S. facility and our China facility has been tremendous. Dr. Yu is one of the very experienced scientists and uh, in the last few years has proven himself to be quite a good manager. We have a very, very strong management team. We also have a very, very experienced board of directors. I think we can get them into the right strategic direction. The dream of the founders of Aptomics start to become realized and it is already very evident in the reagent market and in the diagnostic market. And of course our dream is that the technology itself will bring a product that benefit the human health in the therapeutic area as well. In five years, I hope we have a number of clinical trials and even a drug that we have developed on the marketplace. Well, I see a progressively increased use of antibodies. In fact, even today in the industry, nearly a half the molecules under development are antibodies. On the research level, to produce antibodies that would react or detect all different proteins in a cell in their different states of activity, this is a dream that can be realized relatively soon. At the diagnostic level, there are opportunities to use antibodies in each one of these modes to progressively develop diagnostic reagents which would more adequately diagnose both health and disease. And finally, in the therapeutic domain, we would expect the development to intervene not just in infectious disease, but in a sense, various regulatory processes and address nearly all of the diseases, both in terms of developmental diseases, the scourge of mankind diseases. Probably the only segment of disease not addressable would be genetic diseases 
which simply couldn't be addressed by an antibody.